Good afternoon, or good evening rather. Would you please rise and join with me in singing our call to worship, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Well, welcome to all of you to the Lessons in Carol service 2017. This is an event that many of us look forward to each year. The room is cozy, the mood is warm, the food afterwards is outstanding, and if we are lucky, Mr. Hickey might wear his Santa hat and Miss Tejan may sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer at dinner again this year. Good memories and feelings all around. But the words we are about to read and the songs that we are singing and will sing indicate a much bigger takeaway is available to us. The problem is we are prone to missing it. Any halfway decent psychiatrist will tell you that it is part of the human condition to distract ourselves when we have events, truths, decisions that are looming, that will cost us something. This is why it's so hard to get men to go to the doctor. We might have to change our routines. This is why we tolerate dysfunctional behavior from friends and loved ones for so long, busying ourselves with activities and strategies that dance around the problem rather than really addressing it. It is why when we have a big paper to write or a presentation to give, we all of a sudden become so adept at cleaning and organizing our rooms. Oh, we will stay busy, all right, but on everything else except the very thing that we need to deal with. Whole cultures do this, too. We avoid difficult topics like out-of-control debt, inability to fill promises to retirees, or a changing climate, because they are just too difficult to confront. And yet American culture in particular has made distraction techniques an art form when it comes to Christmas. If you are new to our culture, and many of you in this room are, and we were to ask you, what, what do you think Christmas is? You might say shopping, houses and lawns decorated with colored lights, parties, obnoxious sweaters, a large man in a flying sleigh pulled by reindeer, frenetic activity, Mariah Carey. The list goes on and on. But what all of this stuff is doing is distracting us from a historical event that confronts us and causes us to consider this world, its meaning, and our purpose in it in a whole new way. Don't be afraid. It's not an ugly confrontation, not one you have to dread. It's a truth dripping with sugar and honey, strange and mysterious, yet deeply warm and tender. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the birth of Jesus Christ, which is what Christmas is all about. What we celebrate tonight and over the next several weeks is that over 2,000 years ago, a baby named Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea to a carpenter named Joseph and a peasant girl named Mary. It is an indisputable, well-documented, historical fact. And while this baby was born just like you and I were, he was no ordinary baby. His birth was one of the two most significant historical events in all of world history. His resurrection from the dead some 33 years later, another historical fact being the other. He grew up and inaugurated a kingdom, one that has been growing ever since and is eclipsing all other kingdoms in size, power, glory, and duration. And yet remarkably different than any other ruler this world has ever seen, as he rules and reigns over this kingdom, he has time for and interest in anyone who wants to be a part of it. No appointment with the secretary, no security clearance, no bribes needed. The joining of his kingdom is voluntary. He will not trick you, coerce you, or bully you into joining. Once you have joined, he will not use his power and authority to abuse you. <coughs> there will be no shocking revelations regarding his character. He came humbly so that you and I would not be made to feel that we would have to be of a certain race or class or socioeconomic status or education to be accepted. He knew our frailty, our inability to live up to the very standards we set for ourselves, let alone the ones others put on us. That's why you never hear him say things like, try harder. When you make all A's, then I will accept you. Or God helps those who help themselves. No, he was gentle and kind at heart full of love, full of grace, full of truth. And because the Bible says that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, Christmas tells us 
what God is like. The all-powerful, all-knowing maker of the universe is kind and humble and invitational. Christmas confronts us with a God who is reaching out to us in terms we can understand and saying, I'm not so scary after all. I see you. I know you. I love you. I want you to know me and have a relationship with me that will satisfy your deepest needs and longings. What you're going to hear tonight is the story, the story of Jesus' birth, told through nine selected passages. Some of these passages that pointed to Jesus' birth were written hundreds, even thousands of years before his birth. Coincidence is not an intellectually viable option. The passages connect like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that when put together present a clear picture. That picture confronts us tonight and makes us look past whatever our previous conceptions of Christmas were to deeper contemplations. The reality that we have to confront is not whether or not this happened, but whether or not God is really this good and our hope really this full. Don't miss this moment. Come to Bethlehem and see Christ whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this night, and we thank you for all that it signifies and entails. We thank you, God, that we stand on historical footing. Our faith is not ethereal. It's not made up. It's not fanciful. It's grounded in reality. But God, because of sin, our hearts and minds don't always see it. We don't see how good you are. We don't see how much you love us. We have wrong conceptions of you that you are somehow mean or distant, or not at all interested in us as people. The opposite is true. You love us, and Jesus Christ shows us the extent of that love. So we praise you tonight. May our songs, may the words that we read, your words, the words of Scripture, be music to your ears. May we grow tonight. And God, we thank you for all of the gifts that you have given us. You have been so good to us. You have blessed us. And God, when you were here on earth, you gave us a prayer that in the midst of our confusion, in the midst of all that's going on, the complexity of life, you gave us a prayer that was simple and to the point and very powerful. And so we recite that prayer together tonight, the Lord's Prayer, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise and join me in singing Angels We Have Heard on High.
Thank you. Please take a seat. The first lesson comes from the book of Genesis. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil... You will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you will return. The word of the Lord.
second lesson is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is the word of the Lord. Isaiah 9, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thanks be to God.
Isaiah 11, 1 through 9, the branch from Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decides by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord. Would you please rise and join me in singing, or oh, sing a song of Bethlehem. Please be seated. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words 
and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The word of the Lord. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Please rise and join me in singing our next hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. The sixth lesson is a reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 and 3 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. The word of the Lord.
The seventh lesson comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. This is the word of the Lord.
The eighth lesson is from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came from Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down to him and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The word of the Lord. Would you please rise and join me in singing our next hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Please take a seat. The ninth lesson 
from John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please rise and join me in singing our next hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night.
Thank you. Would you please rise and join in us in singing our last hymn, Joy to the World. Thank you. Please be seated, Mr. Crane. Well, thank you to the musicians, to the singers, to the readers, and to the leaders this evening for making his praise glorious. We are grateful to you and thank you also for being here and celebrating with us. We wish you the merriest of Christmases this season and a blessed new year. After I pray, I'm going to dismiss you. There will be music playing. You're still dismissed, okay? All right. Let's pray together. Father, thanks so much for this night, for your goodness to us. Lord, when you revealed yourself at the time of Christ's birth, those who listened, they investigated, they pondered, and they rejoiced greatly. God, would this be our lot? Would we follow that example this Christmas season? You have given us much to think about, much to ponder, and much to rejoice in. And Lord, help us to be watchful, because you promised to come once, but you promised to come again, and it could be any time. And so we long for that day, God, when you will come and you will make everything right. Your first coming ensures your second what you promise, you keep. And so we long for you, God, and ask for you to return. Bless us as we go from this place, every family, every person in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>